Hello. Today we are going to see about how a leap procedure or a let's leap is large excision of uh, the squamous columnar junction or large loop excision of the entire transformation zone procedure is done. Now leap is an is an important procedure which is done uh, when a patient is diagnosed with a CIN uh, two or three uh, on a biopsy specimen. It is it, the main aim of leap is to rule out uh, advanced or an invasive malignancy. Again. It, the leap can be diagnostic as well as therapeutic. In diagnostic, it will help us in diagnosing an invasive cancer. In therapeutic, in patients who have uh, a pre-invasive lesion like a CIN2 or CIN3, but who wish to preserve the fertility, uh, the leap procedure can be a therapeutic one as well. Now, what does leap uh, involve? Leap mainly involves a complete excision of the squamous columnar junction along with margins. Uh, so, first we will see what all things are necessary for the leap procedure. Now, the most important tool for a leap procedure is to have a speculum. So, this is an insulated speculum. Now, uh, it's very important to have an insulated speculum because you are going to use an energy and the energy is going to be at a high frequency current or a, the current is going to be very high. So, there is a chance of vagina getting burnt. So, the speculum has to be insulated. This is a must. Then the second thing which is required is these leap electrodes. Now the leap electrodes come with varying sizes. Uh, depending on the size of the cervix and the nature of the lesion, you can select an electrode. So electrode is like a, it is like a basically like a pottery uh, a tip of a pottery pencil, but it has got a leap, a titanium leap, which will sort of pass current and it will help you to excise the part of the cervix. Now, as I said, there are varying sizes and shapes. Uh, whatever is convenient and whatever is suitable for the patient, you can use that. Now, in addition to the leap electrodes, you also need a ballpoint cautery. The ballpoint cautery is very important because after a leap procedure, there are chances of bleeding. So, an accurate uh, hemostasis needs to be achieved. So, that is why a ballpoint cautery is important. Again, very important but practical point is to have a methylene blue for marking the specimen because once you excise the specimen, the specimen has to be marked uh, uh, with, with the directions. The mucosal end has to be marked, anterior posterior also there should be marking which should be done. Now in addition to this, you also need basic things which are essential in uh, screening such as acetic acid because acetic acid will again help you to check what are the abnormal areas. More important than acetic acid in uh, uh, leap is the Lugol's iodine. Lugol's iodine is very important because it will help you to demarcate the iodine negative areas because all the iodine negative areas you should excise. In addition to that, basic things like sponge holder, uh, gauze pieces then alice and a long it's also important to have a long tooth forceps because sometimes the vagina can be quite deep and you need a good length to ex to hold the cervix to excise it another important point which is important is to have a good suction because as i told you you will be using a very very high frequency current uh, uh, the cautery settings are quite on the higher side so this requires a good smoke evacuation otherwise uh, your vision will be clouded and you will not see now, once after starting the procedure, the patient has to be put in the lithotomy position. Most of the times we do it under anesthesia, but you can also do it under something like a paracervical block, but it can be painful. So it is safest to do it under anesthesia, short anesthesia. So the first step involves uh, fixing the speculum. As I told you that the insulated speculum is very, very important. Again, before starting the procedure, it's important that the bladder is evacuated. And the bladder is drained because if the bladder is full, then it will hamper in the vision. So the first step involves insertion of speculum and exposing the affected area. So proper exposure is important. Then so acetic acid is applied onto the cervix. Also, if facilities are available, the leap procedure can also be done under colposcopic control. Lugol's iodine is applied with the main aim is to demarcate the iodine negative areas because the iodine negative areas are something which need to be excised completely. Now, wait at least 20 seconds to 30 seconds for the iodine to take. With the suction. Now, 
you have to select the accurate leap electrode again the settings are important so we do at 50 cutting and 50 coag uh, it, coag is always spray and cut is pure cut so now so there are two ways of uh, doing a leap excision one is either you do from anterior to posterior or you can do from right to left so in this case since the ulcer is little big we'll do it from anterior to posterior now once you're doing cut the leap it has to be a fast and it has to be quick at the same time somebody has to be suctioning continuously and retract the wall as well so the entire thing has to be excised there can be bleeders so after the leap excision is done hemostasis has to be achieved and there is also a top hat which needs to be taken so for the top hat a special electrode has to be used the so top hat is mainly the endocervical portion now the aim is to achieve a good hemostasis So the bed has to be nicely coagulated using a high current, we usually keep somewhere between 50 to 60 with spray mode. And some normal saline also. So suctioning of the fumes is important because otherwise your vision will be hampered. So once hemostasis is achieved, then we always put a roller gauze betadine and H2O2. Hydrogen peroxide, a pack soaked in H hydrogen peroxide and betadine is inserted inside. So roller gauze soaked in uh, betadine and hydrogen peroxide is inserted which will be kept for around 12 hours. And then a Foley's catheter is inserted. So that completes the end of the procedure.